<laughs> Hello, everyone. I'm Nicole Phillips. I'm here with Angie Spencer. We are going to talk today about roles, goals, and reporting. So all of us here at Oklahoma Highway Safety Office knows that pre uh, preventing injuries and reducing the economic cost due to traffic crashes requires full effort between multiple entities. Each of you represent organizations offering tools, resources and programs that contribute to our mission to combat the number of and severity of traffic crashes by developing and supporting educational enforcement and engineering programs. We can't meet our goals without all the great work you do. So today we wanna to talk about how to achieve those goals through project implementation. So by the end of the session, you should understand the project directors and finance officers roles, understand the program managers roles, identify resources to strategically plan project implementation, build value added progress reports and learn to use project performance information to drive success. So by the end of the session, um, during the session, I'm going to use the project manager cycle as your blueprint. As you work with your highway safety program manager, uh, the cycle will assist in ensuring your project is successful through continuous planning, execution, monitoring and reporting, strategizing to meet your goals. And if you have any questions at any time during the session, this presentation, don't forget to use your chat area to type in your question and we'll address them. So what are the different roles here? So your project director will implement the activities, track the activities, adjust activities in line with your agreement to meet the goal, manage the staff of volunteers, submit the activities in the progress reports, prepare for the next reporting period. The financial administration in this context is the person submitting payroll and signing off on the summary spreadsheet. And your high, highway safety program manager will offer strategic support within the in initiation of the project, conducting activities, and help you towards your goals. So planning activities, planning criteria. When planning your monthly activities, it's helpful to refer to your grant agreement. This is found at the bottom of the award documents of the main drop-down menu in your OGX system. All grant activities must be in line with your project goals, milestones, and budget projections. The grant agreement explains what is allowable under the grant terms, and it is the responsibility of the project director to verify activity and expenses against it. You should be tracking those. If your agreement includes funding for equipment, you should verify quotes, vendors, and plan to make purchases as early as possible in the grant year. If you think a strat strategy would work within your project, but it's not listed in your specific countermeasure within your grant agreement, Please discuss this with your program manager and uh, we'll see about implementation. Managing your project staff. Managing project staff starts with planning the project activities. Um, regardless of what type of grant you're working, you must have a plan for your staff or volunteers to meet your goals and milestones. Shift planning for the project staff can include duties for enforcement officers as well as full-time employees and employees devoting only a certain amount of their time to the project and as allowable shifts should be scheduled around these times. Data can and should be used to determine when the traffic safety problem is in your area and at its worst. Both state and local data should be considered. And should you need assistance with the data in interpretation and shift planning, your program managers are, your vi are a vital resource for you. Utilize us. Training, you wanna ensure that any training requirements have been met this could be uh, standardized field sobriety testings for your DUI grants or general training ab about your Highway Safety Office Award for anyone working on the project. Plan for the unexpected. Ensure that officers and other staff realize that um, that what they need, to, that if their attention is taken off the grant duties, uh, they need to uh, they need to go off of the duties and um, continue on later. So enforcement officers, if they start taking calls from dispatch and uh, to help in busy areas, they must sign out on the grant shifts. 
and regular duty activities are not covered for reimbursement by the grant. Um, your P, uh, public information and education, you know, work towards meeting your monthly targets. Facebook and other media, public speak speaking, all of those are your PINEs. And there's a great resource available through the Department of Transportation at your at www.trafficmarketing.gov. So utilize that. So executing your activities. First part of executing your activities is to have an uh, activity oversight. This could be track and tracking of this activity can be in form of a timesheet or activity reports. It's important when submitting your timesheets or activity reports that it be complete and accurate. Then double check the activity and verify that all the documents there are need, all the documents needed are there. Um, and this would be all supporting documentation. So manage the details of your grant so your project is successful. Encourage continuous planning, monitoring, and adjusting as needed. Manage your budget so you are effectively implementing your project. The grant documents include budget projections and totals that help guide you in your fiscal usage. Approved equipment and other items in the grant are intended for use within the grant year, so be sure to coordinate with your agency personnel to purchase equipment early in the year so it can be, be de deployed to enhance your project. Your milestones and targets are periodically reviewed. This is how we track the progress of your project, so you should also be reviewing these. Nicole, you, yes, we had a request to go back to the previous slide. How far are you in here? This one? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Did they just want to take a screenshot of it or? Good. I think that's what some of them are doing, yes. Okay, okay. So, um, like I say, manage your details of your grant so your project is successful. Uh, manage your budget. Um, you know, your milestones and targets. Uh, are periodically reviewed. Again, that's how we track the progress of your project, so make sure you're tracking it also. Make sure you use evidence-based strategy and best practices. And remember, your program manager is your greatest ally. If you are having issues of any kind with implementing the project, please contact us. So let's talk about supporting document. Oh, oops. Okay. Sorry. Okay, sorry about that. So let's talk about your supporting documentation. We recommend gathering documentation throughout the month and reviewing continuously so that adjustments can be made as appropriate and that the documentation is complete. In other words, cross your T's and dot your I's. Activity sheets for timesheets for law enforcement, check days and hours worked, written contacts, warnings, citations. Make sure you have all signatures, individuals and supervisors. And keep in mind that if you are a supervisor and you worked hours, you cannot sign off on your time. Somebody else has to do that for you. Uh, check your class rosters, evaluations, sign up sheets, enrollment lists, criteria, agendas, receipts, anything that may be involved in your reporting. These are all supporting documents. And again, make certain that all documentation is complete and ready for submission. Um, monitor and report. That's when you submit objective evidence of your activities and expenditures. Your project director and finance administration will submit progress reports, submit reimbursement requests, do ongoing project monitoring, and do award specific reporting requirements. Do continuous monitoring of all overall activities. And then your program managers, we will process those claims, uh, provide st strategic support and technical assistance, verify internal controls, and do periodic monitoring of mindset milestones and finances. This is to include on-site visits and video or telephone visits. So when submitting your reports, make certain to provide a narrative summary. That is so important. 
uh, to explain your activities. It's helpful and can lessen a lot of questions. In other words, if you submit a report for payment and you are asking for reimbursement for $2,500, but your progress reports show that you had very little activity for the month, are you requesting payment for previous activities from a prior month? Um, because the payroll, because your payroll was at the end of the month, put this in your narrative summary. If you have activity for the month, but will not be asking for reimbursement of these activities due to payroll dates or et cetera, note this in your narrative summary for tracking. Again, communication is vital. Each month, you're required to submit a progress report and request for reimbursement. The reporting period can be calendar month or fiscal cycle. Either way, 12 reports are required, including when circumstances lead to no activity for, for particular reporting period. I want to emphasize these reports are required even if no activity is performed. Um, your reimbursement request can only be processed for funds you've already paid, so we need a zero balance or a check attached. Your organization is responsible for making sure reports are accurate and timely, and reporting is due no later than 30 days after activity within the report has occurred. Again, no later than 30 days. Because without timely reporting, Program, uh, program managers cannot periodically monitor the program to ensure milestones and fiscal usage are within range for successful project um, outcomes. And make, an, uh, make a note that contractual reporting requirements are award specific. Remember, your highway safety program manager will do continuous reviews of your reports and we will send them back to you for modification if needed. So, Let's do a knowledge check. So type your answers in the chat area. If you have a question, let us know. Um, we can, you can type it into the chat area also. And if you have time to address it, we will, okay? But we will have time to um, answer questions later also. So question, who is primarily responsible for ensuring an activity or purchase is allowable? Is it your program manager, your project director, your highway safety finance manager, or officers or staff working the shifts? So go ahead and type your answers into the chat pod. Chat pod. Or chat area. What do you think? Who is primarily responsible for ensuring the activity or purchases are allowable? No one? No one has the answer? Everyone is saying project right. manager or program manager. Well, it is the project director. Okay. As your project director, you should review your grant agreement for what activities and expenditures are allowable and communicate that to your staff. Program managers will verify finalize requests for reimbursement and can provide additional support as needed. Any questions there? Hey, okay. Nicole. Yes. Um, since so many people were putting in program manager, can you maybe go back and explain why it's not the program manager and why it's the project director? So. We, we as program managers, we do reimbursement, but you are the ones who are actually ensuring that activity and purchase are allowable. That should be in your grant agreement. So you wanna get back into your grant agreement and ensure that those are gonna be covered. Um, if you have any questions before any activity is done, contact your program manager to ensure that that will be allowable. And I just wanted to reiterate on that. Um, it's not really the program manager's responsibility to ensure that it's fundable up front um, because we want the project director to know that according to their grant agreement, if it's fundable before your agency um, incurs that expense. It's very important that the project director review those items within the grant. If you have any questions about the fundability of something, please ask before. 
we are not in the business of making you incur expenses that will not be refundable by us or reimbursed by us. So please ask questions before an expense occurs. Okay, so let's talk about our progress reports. Progress reports. They are a summary of monthly activity. You have milestones. We all have a set of milestones or performance measures for your project. They are included in your agreement and require to be updated each time you submit your progress reports. Performance measures vary between projects depending on the program area. But a police enforcement project will not have the same performance objectives as your traffic uh, records report or a child safety project or a motorcycle safety project. But the monitoring of the project is the same regardless of the type. And again, you're a good narrative for your activities. This helps back up the activity of your project. So let's do another knowledge check. Okay, again, uh, type your answer in the chat area. So in what time frame must monthly reports be submitted? When the project staff gets around to it, 45 days at the, after the end of the month, at the end of the fiscal year, 30 days after the activity within the report has occurred? What do you think? We're doing great. Well, it looks like everybody's getting the answer. Um, it is 30 days after the activity within the report has occurred. All reports are due monthly without timely reporting. Program, we as program managers are enabled to do our part of the uh, project management cycle to help ensure success of the project. And continued late reporting can affect your ability for future grants. Okay, so your progress report information. Let's look at section one of your progress report information. So here's a screenshot of the progress report, okay? If you have no activity for the month, there's a convenient check mark at the top of the progress report. Just put a check mark in there, okay? Um, if you have a, no, uh, just you know, click on the box. However, if you are requesting reimbursement, for an activity for the prior month due to pay periods, make note of that again in your narrative summary. It's important that we understand what's going on. Okay. You'll enter the reporting period into that area with your calendar. If you have activity, then enter the progress data into your activity. And in line with items, align the line items align with the activity and milestones in your grant agreement. So again, it's important you are aware of what's in the document. Okay. So then for enforcement grants, you'll enter the number of written contacts into your key program areas. Uh, for all awards, you'll provide a narrative summary. Again, communication is vital. Tell us what you're doing. I don't, I can't re re-emphasize that enough, you know. Um, if we if we don't know what's going on, um, we're just gonna send it back for, you know, um, modification because uh, we can't reimburse for something that it doesn't make sense. So you'll enter also you'll enter your full name to certify if everything is true and correct and you haven't violated any grant agreement terms or laws. And then once your progress report is submitted, your program manager will also add comments. And we recommend that once you submit your reports, go back and, and view your program manager comments. Uh, this is a great place to view the progress from the highway safety perspective. Okay, let's go back to the narrative summary. Again, so important. This is where you have the opportunity to highlight significant information and success. Explain the anomalies. Those are the things, like I said, if we don't understand what's going on, it's hard for us to be able to re send, send it in uh, for reimbursement. Share non-grant highway safety information. Um, this space is a great opportunity to capture information that isn't in the activity data. It can be community feedback or an explanation of or lower activity. Your program manager can read a good narrative and make note of possible opportunities to uh, plan for following months and support you strategically. But remember, it's important to have timely reporting.
So a good narrative summaries are the opportunity to explain and share progress that is not reported in the milestones, like payroll changes such as you know cost of living or rate changes. Um, again, think about the things that we don't know. So with data and context, we can move more effectively strategize and plan for the following months. So let's do another knowledge check. Again, type your answer down in the chat area. What types of information should go into your narrative summary? Is that significant information and success? Written summary of contacts? Explanation of anomalies? or personal identifying information? What do you think? We have all, oops. Well, actually it's significant information and success, okay? Um, because contact numbers are captured in section one, and they don't have to be revisited in the narrative summary. And remember that we never want personal identifying information um, should, that should not be included in those reports. So significant information and explanation of anomalies, anything that you feel that we need to know further about. So I am now going to hand this over to Angie, and she's going to talk about strategizing. Morning, everyone. Um, I, for those of you I haven't talked to yet, I don't normally sound like this. I apologize. I am currently under the wrath of Oklahoma allergy season. <laughs> so thank you, Nicole. Uh, so strategizing um, is gonna be super important. Um, as you can see here, the, the roles of the project director and financial administrator as far as strategy is concerned are gonna be to control uh, your change requests. Um, change requests can either uh, increase or decrease funding um, like that somewhere through the middle of the year, you figure out, hey, I'm going to need a lot more money or, hey, I'm not going to be able to spend all of this money. It's that makes it that more imperative for you to really pay attention and keep that reporting up to date because uh, we can help you modify um, those agreements based on what's going to work best for you um, by the end of that, the, 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 the grant year. So just know that just because we start out one way doesn't mean we have to end up that way at all. Um, communicating with your program manager. That's, as Nicole has said, it's very, very, very important. You communicate anything and everything with us. Um, maybe you're having trouble making the two stops per hour requirement, you know, let us know. Maybe we can, we can put our heads together and figure out um, how best to accomplish those uh, milestones. By the way, I'm gonna throw in a little bonus question here. I thought that might be fun to see. Um, what free resource does the Highway Safety Office offer everyone when it comes to strategizing based on data? Like, what, what is it that we have that you guys can review and study at any time? Crash data. Yes, the map. Good job, guys. Woo woo. Yes, we have that beautiful crash uh, dashboard where you can see all of the, the very colorful, unfortunately, um, but wonderful data. We all love our data, you know, for you to gather where these crashes are occurring. Um, it pinpoints not every, just every crash site, but other important information, inc including the crash severity, the reason behind the crash, the days and times of the most crashes, all specific to your own areas. Um, in any case, if you notice that you're having trouble meeting your monthly goals, please reach out to your program manager. Your Oklahoma Highway Safety Office is a full service station for all of your grant needs. All right, so 
Let's revisit the progress report and talk briefly about how to use that information and other data to make sure the project remains in line with projections and make adjustments as necessary. Subject to what is allowable for your funding source, of course. Here we see section two of the progress report, which auto populates a summary comparison for you. In this example, the actual monthly hours exceeded the target, which is okay in general. If we consider the annual progress context, however, we start to see a different picture. This project is 30% ahead of projections for the year to date, but could be at 80% spending. Since this is an enforcement example, it could be that higher ranking officers were working overtime shifts. Now let's add to the picture and hypothetically say this report is from June. Things start to look different with a full quarter of activity pending in our 80% spending scenario. Worse yet, what if this report was late and wasn't received until September and almost three months of activity haven't even been considered, but there's only two weeks left in the fiscal year. As everybody can imagine, um, that, would, that could pose a big problem um, for all of us to figure out what we need to do um, to get everything right in line again. And how many of you have experienced staffing issues? Hello. Like I said, whenever, just because it started out one way, none of us can predict the future. So if at the, 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 the after the first quarter, the second quarter, the third quarter, if you're, you're having any trouble, questions, concerns about meeting the milestones that we've established, please communicate that with us. We can help you out. So let's do a knowledge check. You observe reduced DUI activity on overtime shifts, but increased activity on non-grant department activity. What should you do? And put your answers over in the chat so we can um, take a good guess at this. Review local and state data with your program manager and consider different shift times. Nothing, we'll get them eventually. Delay submitting progress reports until the numbers look better or claim the non-grant activity and include it on your report for reimbursement. All right, we got a bunch of A's. All right, fantastic. So yes, we always wanna take action. Um, again, Staying on top of this, uh, the, the details, the activity every month, it's, it's just absolutely paramount. And, and when you keep it all straightforward and you stay on top of it the whole year, it really makes the whole year that much easier um, to, to complete at the end because, you know, at the, at the end of the year reporting, you know, even filling out your monthly um, progress reports, it's just really easy to input all of the data that we need to, to process all of those claims. So, and lest we forget, we cannot claim non-grant activity. That is bad, very, very, very bad. All right, good job. Okay, so in closed out here, um, and like I had just mentioned, that the end of your summary, um, and uh, most of you are aware, we've got some new grantees this year, it's exciting. Um, so the end of your summary is due no later than October 31st and includes that information we were talking about, tying project activities to goals and accomplishments. Um, and like we said again, this is just super important. If reporting is timely and accurate, closeout becomes very straightforward. Um, so your, your project director and finan financial administrator, uh, you're responsible for doing that project assessment and submitting that end of your summary. And our end as your program manager are also going to be uh, to submit the end of your summary comments as well. So, and just give as much detail as you can um, through every month, you know, at the end of the year, you know, paint the picture um, on, on your, your successes, your challenges. You know, we just, you, you're gonna wanna, you know, give us the whole, the whole picture that you can. It, help, it helps us all uh, complete it from here on our end as well. 
So your keys to project success success are um, number one is always going to be communication. Communicate, communicate, communicate. And, and then on top of that, document, document, document. You know, I don't know about you, but if I don't write it down, it didn't happen. Trying to remember, you know, some months later what happened a month ago, um, like, good luck. <laughs> so I always document, document, document. Um, so you have the, those, those notes on your mind fresh. So, so we can make sure we capture all of those um, thoughts that you have on your, on your project at that time. So you're always knowing what's going on. Uh, help us help you. Um, as Nicole said, your program manager is your greatest ally. And if you need anything, just ask. I mean, we, I can't stress enough. Neither one of us can stress enough. We are here for you and we want to help you. Uh, let's do another knowledge check. Okay, which is not a responsibility of the project director and uh, the finance officer? Is it project implementation? Is it gathering supporting documentation? Is it submitting progress reports and reimbursement requests? Or is it periodic monitoring? And this one's kind of tricky too. Let's see what we got over in the chat box. All right, got some different answers going on. Mm -hmm. There's one. All right, good, good guesses, everybody. All right, so, all right, good job, guys. So, it's actually going to be periodic monitoring. So, and, and as uh, Nicole and Jacqueline kind of touched on earlier, um, periodic monitoring is going to be something that your program manager is going to do. Um, it is really, a you guys are really responsible for monitoring it constantly from beginning to end. And so what we've got on our end is to help you uh, with support. You know, we're, we're only going to be doing the periodic monitoring. Um, when we do our quarterly visits, our virtual monitoring, you know, our, our um, report um, monitoring, you know, that periodic monitoring is really just kind of for us. So yes, I... We, we did kind of tricky there. Now, gotcha. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions um, about that aspect of, of responsibility? Okay, very good. One more. At what stage in the cycle should you communicate with your financial officer and coordinator? All right. Very good. Okay, well, yeah. Yeah. All right. Everybody gets a gold star. Fantastic. Yes. Communicate, communicate, communicate. Absolutely all the time. It's going to be a goal. Touchdown. Everybody gets to win when we stay in communication all the time. So I will use this opportunity. Um, that's about all I have. Does anybody have any questions about anything they've seen in our session here? Dee's hand is up, so I think she might want to add something. Okay. Yes, Dee, Angela. Thank you so much. I did want to add, you know, we talk a lot about communication. I want to specify that communication should be about good things as well. I know it's really easy to um, to chime in when you need to explain something and maybe isn't going wrong, right, or it's kind of skewing from center. But we also want to hear about the great things that are happening. Um, so when you have events going on in your community, whether they are specifically related to your grant activity or if they're traffic safety related in general, communicate with your program manager, communicate with our office. We may have opportunities to um, share resources. Um, we might be able to, you know, do something with our traffic safety educators or partner with our impaired driving liaisons. We might be able to send a program manager out to do a presentation. Just don't hesitate to communicate with us. We are here to serve you and we hope that you are here to serve with us as well. Very good. Thank you, Dee. Well. Okay. Andy. Oh, yes, ma'am. Can I add something there as well? Because Dee just gave me an idea. 
Uh, something else in regard to not just reporting, you know, the negative stuff, but also the positive stuff. Once you are a project director for a highway safety project, chances are you're paying attention to a lot of, you kind of become traffic safety focused there in your agency. And so you are going to see what names stick out as, you know, really traffic safety heroes, um, the people who are going out and really busting their butts and, and making a difference. The guys that are going out and getting way more than two contacts an hour um, or getting a lot of DUIs or getting, you know, a lot of, of drug arrests off the street or a lot of warrant arrests off the street. Every year we have um, the Traffic Safety Summit and we have an opportunity to, uh, for you guys to nominate uh, people in your agency for traffic safety awards. And I would really encourage you guys to pay attention to that as you go through the year, because we would love to uh, recognize your traffic safety heroes. It doesn't necessarily have to be that they are a hero with the grant, but like I said, when you're a project director, you're gonna start noticing and you'll be reporting on a lot of activity with things like click it or ticket or drive sober, get pulled over. You're gonna notice um, traffic safety activity in your agency. So make sure you're paying attention to that when award nomination season comes around. Great points, Kelly. Thank you. Jacqueline. 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 So I also wanted to jump in about the um, due date of reporting. So we emphasize that a report is due every month, but it really is up to your agencies what that month really consists of. It is okay to do reporting according to your pay cycles such as if you are um, paying officers on a uh, biweekly basis, um, you can do two pay cycles in one report. Um, and then when your month rolls around that you have three pay cycles in, um, you could include three pay cycles into that month's report. It does not have to be a report for a calendar month. So whatever works easiest for your procedures and policies within your um, agency, please utilize that. Just com again, communicate with that, that with your program manager so we know what we're looking at. Um, so just let us know. We are not here to make your agency's life um, hard. <laughs> we want this process to be as simple as possible on your end. And if that means that we um, adjust those, what that monthly report really looks like, um, that's fine. Just as long as there's 12 within the grant cycle that you've turned in, that's all we need. Um, in addition to that, um, I want to go, um, go back to what Angie said about requesting a reduction or an increase in funds. Um, it's really important that you do your best to um, do what the grant is asking of you. Um, sometimes staffing changes and we can't quite make um, the goal that was originally set in the year and that's fine. Um, again, communication is going to help us make those changes and shifts in the year. Um, one thing I wanted to say was if you are working more hours than your grant really projects each month, just be wary of that. Um, you absolutely can request more um, funds through the year, but that doesn't always mean that it will be approved. So we really like to see the funds that we award last through the year if that's what your grant is um, requesting of you. So do your best to stretch those funds out. If you have people constantly requesting more hours than you've really allocated for the month, communicate that with your program manager and we can um, look into whether or not there's additional funding available to fund more hours, say, in the last part of the year. This is really important as well for the um, nonprofits or other agency um, grants not related to law enforcement. If your grant states that you're supposed to do so many events with so many hours slash money, it's really important that we see those hours producing the goals at which we uh, the grant is written and requested. So just uh, pay attention to those goals and your hours and making sure that we're really allocating those through the entire year. So um, any other questions for um, Angie? All right.